Good evening. Okay, um, welcome, good, good evening to everyone. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, okay, thank you. Good evening, teacher, good evening, class. Hi, good evening <clears throat> to everyone. Um, okay, uh, we're going to start with the video conference right now. And, um, but before to start, um, first of all, I wanna see a, Excuse me a second. I have to check something here on my computer. Uh, okay. Okay, um, <clears throat> so uh, first of all, I want to see um, if you remember the topic that we we're discussing uh, yesterday. Um, I remember that we yesterday were talking about personality, uh, but what else do you remember? Uh, Do you remember the use of yarn? When do we use yarn? Uh, Mi Sierra, Mr. Cáceres.
I don't remember very well, teacher. You don't remember. Okay, we're going to watch a video um, tonight and we're going to see um, how Jordan's works. I, I remember that I played this video yesterday, um, but I will say some things uh, before going to, to the video. First of all, when we're talking about Jordan's, um, we're talking about verbs that we add the ing form but it doesn't have the uh, meaning of uh, what we add when we're talking about, uh, in this case, um, uh, present progressive, okay? So it's not the same using a verb as present progressive uh, um, than use the gerunds as subjects. The structure is going to be, in the case of the verb, okay, the structure is going to be the same. We add ing and we say something that is happening in the moment. But when we use the gerunds, we are using a noun, not the verb, just a noun. We're referring to the meaning of the verb, but as noun. For instance, yeah, here we have some examples of it. And it says voting and choosing, okay? Voting is an important responsibility. Voting there is working in the sentence as a subject. In, in other words, in, in another way to say that, we can refer to this, uh, to this word voting as the um, noun that we use to express something uh, in a sentence. Okay? Choosing uh, happens the same. Choosing a candidate takes time. Okay? Choosing. Um, then we have something that we need to differentiate between how to use gerunds as subjects and how to use gerunds as objects. That's why we are going to play this video tonight. So let's start with it. So this class. In this class, what we want to do is we want to this class what we gerund phrases. Because we're gonna learn how gerund just give me a second. I, I think I'm not sharing my screen. Yes, I'm not sharing my screen. I, I will share it right now. Okay, here we have gerund a, a subject and objects. This is the video we watched yesterday. We're going to watch it again. Okay, so please pay carefully attention to this video because um it so important we, that we can identify gerunds uh, in sentences that works as subjects as an object. Um, uh, just to make sure if we understand what is subject and object, do you know the difference between subject and objects? Uh, no remember. Okay, subject. Um, when we talk about subject, uh, is a particle of the sentence. Remember that we have like different uh, parts in a sentence. Uh, we have the pronouns, we have the verb, and we have a complement. Okay, subjects. Uh, the subjects are a uh, called also nouns or pronouns. The nouns and pronouns uh, is the same. Like is la, la, like the general way to say uh, subjects, okay? <clears throat> so, um, objects, it's what we call the complement of the sentence. That's what we call objects. I will give you an example of it. <clears throat> I speak English. I speak English. We have three elements there. First of all, we have the subject. What is the subject of the sentence? In this case, is the pronoun I, okay? I speak, speak is the second particle of the sentence. In this case, um, it is the second part uh, that we add to the pronoun, is the action, okay? And that is called verb, verb. Later, if we want to add something, extra information, we are going to um, add what is called object. The object of the sentence is 
the complement. In this case, I'm saying I speak English. <clears throat> English is going to be the object of, of the sentence because it's, it's the complement of the sentence. Um, we are going to use the same, the same structure uh, in all the sentences. So what is the difference between them? Um, if we have, uh, in this kind of sentences, different tenses. And what are tenses? The way we express uh, something. Uh, when I say the way we express something is because I'm referring uh, to the um, um, future uh, tense, the past tense, and the present tense. How, we, how I'm going to say something. If I'm, I'm going to say, I work in a university, or I'm going to say, I work with idea at the end of in the verb in the university, or I will work in the university. So three different uh, expressions that we use according to the tenses that we have in English. In the case of the tenses, we have like a set of it. Uh, ones that we use it for past, one that we, uh, some of them uh, we use it for present and the others we use it for future tenses. Um, I mean, future expressions. So that, that's what we are going to differentiate uh, there. So is it clear? Do you know what is subject and object? Yes. Um, teacher, oh, teacher oh. And okay, for, so. for, for me, I think the subject is a, a <clears throat> the noun plus uh, verbs and the object is the is, is the same to the complement is okay no okay the no. subject is the nouns and pronouns okay nouns and pronouns in a nouns sense and, pronouns. and the object is the complement of the sentence uh cuando nosotros hablamos de de este el, el sujeto de la oración. Hacemos referencia nosotros a los pronombres y a los nombres, porque es de quien se habla en la oración. Luego tenemos nosotros lo, eh, lo que es el, el objeto de la oración. ¿Qué es lo que nosotros decimos del sujeto? Es el complemento que nosotros tenemos de un, dentro de una oración. Una oración se compone de tres elementos básicos. Lo mencionaba en su momento. El sujeto, el verbo y el objeto. O dicho de otra forma, de un pronombre, de un verbo y de un complemento. El pronombre, nosotros podemos, en este caso podemos utilizar, eh, eh, si queremos, este, para ser más específicos, utilizar un nombre. Por ejemplo, decir... Eh, Alex, como decir Jorge, como decir Jansi, esos son nombres. Eh, dentro de ellos hay otros grupos que tal vez nosotros vamos a ir manejando un poquito más adelante, eh, que esto es, tiene que ver con cuestiones <coughs> gramaticales, pero, pero no quiero entrar mucho en, 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 ese, en esa área porque es muy extenso, porque ahí vamos a hablar de nombres comunes, este, nombres propios y luego tenemos que este, hacer la diferencia entre los, los verbos que vamos a utilizar cuando son este, verbos en pasado, verbos en pasado participio, o sea, es un, un montón de, de información que este, debemos manejar. Pero la forma básica de una oración siempre va a contener un sujeto, un verbo y un objeto. ¿Sí? Esos tres elementos. Okay, is it clear now? Yes, teacher. Okay, thank you. Yes, teacher. Thank you. So, when we're talking about germs, and this is the part that we're going to focus right now, uh, when we talk about germs, germs can be like words with ing that we use it as subjects. Existen este tipo de, de palabras que se les conoce como gerundios. Estos gerundios 
eh, son verbos a los cuales le agregamos el ing y estos los utilizamos como sujetos dentro de una oración. Eh, estos, no, como son verbos con el ing, no se pueden utilizar, eh, perdón, como son verbos con ing eh, y los utilizamos como gerundio, no pueden tener eh, la función que tiene un verbo. Existe otro grupo que es el que se utiliza para los, las oraciones eh, progresivas. Por ejemplo, el, el, el presente progresivo. Yo estoy caminando, I'm walking. ¿Okay? El walking lleva el ing, pero la función de ese verbo es eh, complementar o, o, o dar a entender una acción que se está realizando en el momento. En el, en el caso, eh, y lo voy a poner de esta manera, para que comprendamos un poquito mejor, en el caso de los gerundios, el walking lo estaríamos utilizando como un nombre. Walking, it's one of the, of my, eh, we can say like, walking is one of my favorite activities. Caminar es una de mis actividades favoritas. Ok, caminar, ese, esa um, forma eh, de este verbo me está funcionando como un nombre dentro de la oración, no como una acción. ¿Sí? Entonces, eso es lo que nosotros conocemos como gerundios. Verbos que se utilizan como sujetos de la oración. No sé si está claro de esa manera. It's, it's clear. Ok, very good. So, I'm going to play the audio and then uh, we're going to discuss and we're going to go uh, to the next topic that corresponds for tonight class, to, to tonight class, okay? So please pay attention to this. And, ah, or, and let me know if you can listen the audio because sometimes, uh, I don't know why, <coughs> the settings are like... Sorry, can you hear that? Welcome to this class. Yes, okay, so pay, pay attention to this. Welcome to this class. In this class, what we want to do is we want to practice gerund phrases. And so we're going to learn how gerunds are used as subjects and also how they're used as objects. And uh, you might have seen and you might be a little bit confused about this whole deal here. So, for example, whenever you see, uh, like at hotels, you see no smoking, uh, no parking, all that. You might think that that is wrong, but actually it's not. And then we're going to try to make sense of all of that here. Um, and then, so let me give you an example on how this is used. So we're going to talk a little bit about politics uh, a little bit. Uh, not going into details, of course, but just some general things about it. Uh, so running for office. Well, look at a couple of sentences here and then uh, just uh, see some common things that politicians say whenever they're running for office. Well, and the, the first thing is voting is an important responsibility. Um, improving our schools, fighting for a new hospital, etc. So let me quickly outline that this is a gerund. So a gerund is simply a verb which uh, you um, add ing to, all right? And then, uh, of course, there's some spelling things about it that you might have learned in previous classes. But here are some examples on how gerunds are, are used either as subjects of sentences so for example voting is an important responsibility voting is the subject of our sentence so it's not acting as a verb let's discuss improving our school so as you can see there we're using that as an object and so let's try to make sense of all of this a couple of more examples choosing a candidate takes time And um, let me point out um, the gerunds here. So choosing a candidate, that's, that's the subject of our sentence. I enjoy working for the people. Okay, that's uh, working in that case is not acting as a verb. It's acting as the object of our sentence. Uh, do you resent paying higher taxes? Again, paying is not the verb. It's, it's, it's the gerund that is being used um, as, a, as an object there. So now that I gave a few examples on how gerunds are used as subjects and how they're used as objects, 
I would like to go into details now and talk a little bit about the usage of gerunds. And the first thing that I'm going to mention is that uh, in this case, in this lesson, we're using gerunds as nouns. So we're using them as people, places, or things. And so we're familiar with the verb work, for example. And if we include ing, then we turn that into a gerund, right? But now we're going to use this gerund as either a subject of a sentence or as the object of, a, of the sentence. And that's what we're going to learn. So let's take a look at the, another gerund. So for example, the verb they. I'm sorry, the verb pay, we turn that into a gerund by simply adding ing, and then we have paying, improve, and of course there are some spelling things that you should have learned in previous classes, uh, and uh, we remove that e, for example, then we add ing, and so we have improving. Let's go into some details now, and let's talk a little bit about gerunds and particularly gerunds being used as subject of sentences. So on the screen right now, we can see that a gerund can be the subject of a sentence. And a couple of grammar rules to learn is that it is always going to be singular. It's always going to act as a third person. And so let's look at that. Voting is an important responsibility. Choosing a candidate takes time. And as you can see, those are subjects of sentences. And uh, the idea here is that this is going to be singular. So we're always going to have a singular verb. Like in this case, voting is an important responsibility. We could say voting was or voting will be. But the idea is that it's going to be singular. And then the other example, choosing a candidate takes time. Again, choosing becomes the subject of our sentence. And so it becomes a thing, not necessarily um, a verb. Um, and then, of course, we need to follow that grammatical rule that we need to add S to that verb. When talking about this topic, it's important not to confuse the gerunds with the present progressive. So let me give you an example about that. If I express, I'm voting today, uh, really what I'm saying is that it's an action that is happening today. right? It, it could be in the future, by the way, as well, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, and on the other hand, voting is an important responsibility. So in that particular case, I'm using that as a present progressive form. On the other hand, I'm using that as a gerund. So I'm using that as the object of my sentence. And so there, it's a verb. And the second example, it's, a, it's the subject of a sentence. And so let me just give you a quick example of what I want you to do. So what is exciting for you? Well, windsurfing is exciting. Windsurfing is very exciting. Playing soccer is exciting. Going to the movies is exciting. So all of those expressions that you've heard in the past, and they don't quite make that much sense, they should make a lot more sense now. And so what I would like for you to do is to take that concept then and Tell me what makes you laugh, what gives you a headache, what is impolite, what is popular in your country, what destroys the environment, and what uh, can be dangerous. All right, teacher, let me try the first one. For me, watching comedy movies makes me laugh. For me, learning math gives me a headache. Using yourself on in class isn't polite. Playing basketball is popular in my country. Burning fossil fuels destroys the environment. Not taking action on weapons of mass destruction can be dangerous. Now let me talk about the last part of our class and what we want to do next is we want to learn how gerunds can also be the objects of sentences. And so let me give you a few examples about that. So we heard politicians say, I suggest improving our schools. So as you can see, the suggest is our verb, and improvement becomes the object of our sense. So it's no longer a verb. I enjoy working for the people. This is what politicians say. And what we want to do here is we want to use gerunds as objects. So they both enjoy. What do they enjoy? They enjoy watching the birds. And then, they, I mean, you could 
you could have said uh, different things. And so what I would also like for you to do is to try to make sense of all of this and try to complete this exercise. So I'll have my virtual students try this out. But I would also like for you to try this out as well. So this is quite easy. Hi, John. I need a ride to the airport. Would you mind taking me? I don't mind taking you. I'm heading that way anyways. Dad, can I go outside and play? Have you finished doing your homework? Why did Javier look so sad today? I think he really misses being away from home during holiday. Teacher, your micro, Microsoft microphone is off. Okay, thank you. Okay, that, that was the video that uh, we're checking about during uh, subjects and objects. And uh, we're going to um, the following uh, part that is not check. And um, there we have an exercise that says it's, uh, the, okay, the, 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 in this case, uh, the instruction said to scramble the German phrases. Um, what I want to know about you is if you had a problem solving this exercise or if you already uh, developed it. Do you complete it? Do you already complete it? No, teacher. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. <clears throat> So um, this part, the instruction is the instruction says that we are going to scramble the German phrases. What does it mean? That um, in in this part we are going to uh, order the words in order to use it as subjects and objects. In the first example, well, in the example that we had here, it says, "Is not a man's job designing clothes." Okay, that, that's a disorder of words. That it, it, those uh, words uh, don't have any any sense in in that sentence. What we're going to do is to order it in the following way: designing clothes is not a man's job. That's maybe uh, not true, but it's um, a, a sentence that we have there in order to uh, uh, order it. Is it clear what we're going to do? For instance, in the exercise number one, it says, very challenging uh, taking care of children must be. Okay, what do you think could be the object or the subject of the sentence? Mm, very challenging, challenging. Mm, okay. In this case, we Thank have- you. Okay, uh -huh. taking care of children must be very challenging, okay? Mm -hmm. Try to do it in that way. It, the, the sentence makes sense in that way, right? Taking care of children must be very challenging. Exactly, try to do it in that way. Okay. What we need to do is just to unscramble, just to, to uh, Try to give an order to those words. Okay. Okay, no, you try to do the second one. What do you think could be the answer? Working on a movie set sounds fascinating. Exactly, yes, exactly. That, that's what we're going to do. So try to unscramble the rest of the sentence and let me know when you finish. One of you want to tell me the number three? One of you wants to tell me uh, the sentence for the number three? Making a living as an artist could be very, pretty difficult. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Try to do it that way. I, I think there is something missing there that we need to put in, in a different part. The last one, working as an architect, sound interesting. Okay, working as an architect, sound interesting. Very good, excellent. So let's go to the following uh, part, the next part. Um, we have the lesson adjective <laughs> in this part, it says, uh, by the end of the class, you will learn how to use adjectives and nouns to make comparison. Uh, this is going to be an easy, um, an easy topic because we're going to be talking about adjectives and nouns. Do you remember, um, I don't know if you have studied this before, but do you remember what are adjectives? What is the purpose of, of, of the adjectives? Describe. Describe, describe, yes, that, that's the purpose. Describe what were what the adjective described in this case because we're talking about a, a, some particle of grammars. A, the adjectives in this case will describe the nouns or what would refer in the sentence in this case. Um, we have some uh, word related adjectives like stressful, fantastic, fascinating, difficult, easy, interesting, dangerous. Um, and also we have some um, word related nouns. The nouns could be like ours, education, work, that can uh, function as, as nouns of the sentence. Uh, let's play the video and, and we're going to start discussing this at the end. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to compare different jobs using adjectives and nouns. For example, let's say that you're considering being a fashion designer or an accountant. Being a fashion designer is more interesting than being an accountant. Or maybe you're considering working as a doctor or a nurse. So a doctor has worse hours than a nurse. So in order to express these ideas, we need to use adjectives and nouns to make these comparisons. So let me do the following. Let me just uh, present the structure. But uh, before we do that, what I would like to do is present this mm -hmm. um, comparison structures. Uh, let me just quickly point out that um, all the comparisons that we're going to do in this class and also the following, we're, we're just going to use these few comparisons, as you can see. We're going to use these words to make the comparisons. So as you can see, we could say more and um, here in the middle we will include an adjective uh, and um, and then we'll include then and that will make the comparison there um, on the other hand we could use less and at the same time we'll use an adjective there um, so a quick example um, being a fashion center is more interesting than being an accountant okay or being an accountant is less interesting than being a fashion designer and so on and so forth um, I guess also, uh, since I pointed out, a doctor, a doctor has worse hours than a nurse, or a nurse has better hours than a doctor. Uh, and then we're going to use this um, other ones here to point out that they might have similarities, that they might be the same or that they might not be the same. Um, and so that's what we're going to be doing in uh, this class. So let's try to make the comparison with, between two jobs. Um, what we'll do is we'll select this first two as you can see here. So we have this one looks like a lawyer and picture number two looks like a mechanic. So let's make the comparison between lawyer and a mechanic. 
before we do that, we want to have some uh, work-related adjectives in mind, such as stressful, fantastic, fascinating, difficult, easy, interesting, dangerous. And of course, there are many more, but because of time, we're not going to go through um, a lot of other adjectives. Uh, and we also want to have, uh, or we want to consider work-related uh, nouns. So what are nouns? They're just people, places, or things, right? So in this case, when we think about jobs, we want to think about things like hours, like how many hours you work, education, uh, how much education do you have, uh, work, uh, is your job, does your job consist of doing a lot of work, right? Uh, and these are the kind of things that we want to keep in mind in order for us to make uh, these comparisons. So what can we say about a lawyer versus, uh, let's say, a mechanic, right? We want to make the comparison between those two. Well, uh, we could say the following. I think we could say that working as a lawyer uh, is more <coughs> stressful than working as as a mechanic. And then, so we will use an adjective in this case. I decided to use the adjective stressful. Uh, and it's, I think it's also important to mention that this is an, an opinion, right? So my opinion could be different than yours. You could think the opposite of this. So I, I wouldn't know neither one of those two because I never worked as a lawyer or as a mechanic, so I wouldn't know which one is more stressful. But it sounds like the lawyer is more stressful, right? And the way that we do it is, well, we're, notice that we're continuing using general phrases similar to uh, the previous class that we had where, where we learned how to make general phrases. So working as a lawyer is more stressful than working as a mechanic. Um, at the same time, you could, uh, you could say working as a mechanic is less stressful than working as a lawyer. Um, and that's, in essence, is basically the same sentence, right? But it's just in a different way. Working as a mechanic is less stressful than working as a lawyer. There you go. Here we go. And the reason I did this is because I quickly wanted to point out that we can use either more um, or we could also use less. So what else could we say about a lawyer and a mechanic? Is as interesting as working as a mechanic. So if I absolutely love cars, then definitely I think that working as a mechanic is very interesting. So in this case, I wanted to point this one out uh, because I want to express that both jobs are the same. So to me, both jobs um, have the same level, if you will, right? They are the same. One is not better than the other. Uh, and again, this is my opinion um, because I love cars and I also think that um, uh, lawyers are interesting and the work that the lawyers do is very interesting. So again, I want to point out that in this case, I'm using adjectives to make the comparisons. What I want to do next is use nouns to make the comparisons. So what kind of nouns can we think about when uh, we think about comparing these two jobs? Well, previously I mentioned that we can think of things like hours, maybe education, uh, or perhaps the type of work that people do. So, well, lawyer and mechanic. It, it usually is the case that a lawyer has more education than a mechanic, right? So uh, in this case, we can say that a lawyer has more education uh, than a mechanic. Uh, this is the noun that I am using to compare. What else can we say about the two jobs? Well, um, I, I could probably say that a mechanic has better hours than a lawyer. Okay. 
and in this case as you can see I used the one here in the middle better and in the middle I included uh, the noun to make the comparisons right so the noun that I'm using to compare it's hours at the same time I could say a lawyer has worse hours than a mechanic okay uh, and perhaps I could say that working as a mechanic <coughs> isn't as much work as working as a lawyer. So what I would like for you to do now is I would like for you to look at all of these jobs. I will be publishing this this document here. Okay. Uh, so we got uh, there's a model, there's a journalist, there's a photographer, a painter, and just choose randomly two jobs that you would like to compare. Okay, guys, um, there we saw, um, I mean, we watched a video that's about how we use uh, the different structures for comparative adjectives. Um, as you know, because th this can be like a little bit boring uh, watching this kind of video, we're going to do an activity. Have you ever uh, completed a word search? Yes, no? Do you know what our word search are? Yes, so we're going to develop a, a word search right now. This going to be this word search is is an activity that's um, online. So that means that you don't have to download in the in this case the page that you're going to be developing. I will stop sharing and and right now I'm going to share the link in the chat box. So please pay attention to it. Okay, I'm sharing the link right now. Please go to the link and complete. After you finish, just a uh, send me a, a, a screenshot. Uh, it could be to this chat box, or if you want, you can share it to. Um, you can share it to the WhatsApp group there, and I will be checking that. Um, I think someone is writing. Hey, Alex, what's wrong with that sentence? I'm not too sure. Um, in my answer, my answer in the platform is correct. And in the number three. In the number three, yes. The thing is there are different uh, possibilities. I will just mention some of them. Uh, for instance, um, um, in this case, could be like uh, making a living as an artist could be pretty difficult. So that's correct. Uh, I don't know if you have have it wrong. Ah, you are correcting to someone else, to Mister Mister Rivera, right? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So, um, well, there, there we have the, the, the answer there, Mr. Mr. Rivera. Um, I don't know if you um, <coughs> check the link that I share. I'm going to spam it. Yes. So there we have the link. And there we have an activity that, that, that is called comparative adjective. This is a word search. I can, because of the, uh, the thing is that there are some restrictions on sharing these kind of activities um in in the video conference because of the um uh, copyrights uh, not because of the activity it's just because of the visuals that we have on the platform so we cannot uh, extra information that is not from english corporativo so that's the reason i, I can share uh, my screen but you can go to the link and solve that exercise after to solve that exercise uh, please just send a screenshot, send a photo, or 
you you decide what you want to share with me uh, in order to evidence uh, that you complete uh, the activities. Okay. Teacher, is a is a only one link or? It's just one link. It's the same. Yeah. I just spam it. Just just. <laughs> So okay. Just, just try to ignore the rest of the link. Just select just one end. Okay. I, I, I use the last one. Okay. Very good. Is the starter or no? Sorry? Starter. <coughs> uh, I don't know what you mean, sir. <coughs> uh, the, the games, the comparative objective, the link. Yes, you have to click on it. You have it there in the in the chat box. I share it there in the chat box, but in this case of the video conference. So you uh, click on the link and will okay. redirect to um, an activity that is online. You have to click on the button that it says begin. Okay. Okay.
Oh my God. Teacher, your microphone. Okay, sorry. I was telling you, sorry, sorry. I, I was muted. Um, okay, I was telling you that because of the time, we, we don't have enough time to finish the activity, but you are going to have the opportunity to complete it uh, later. Uh, what I want you to do right now is just to focus on the, on the instructions that I'm going to give you in order to complete some of the exercises that we have on the platform. Because tomorrow we're going to be working on section, uh, well, in this case in section three, eh, because we have to run over those topics. So let's see what we have to do. Just give me a second, I'm going to share my screen um, here. Okay, um, here we have the knowledge check. Uh, that's supposed to be the ones that we already developed. And you have the, the knowledge check that is 2.8, uh, where it says knowledge check. In this part, you have a, some instruction. It says complete the sentences using the word in parentheses. Um, there you have some of the adjectives that you are uh, finding in, in that word search like better, that are some of the uh, comparative adjectives that we have in English. Um, there you're going to have different like options. What is the correct one? 
you are going to see or you are going to um, study those topics on the video 2.6 and 2.7, okay? Um, there we are going to find the information that we need in order to solve this exercise. Later on, we are going to solve the last one, the summer job. In this part, we're going to review the whole information that we have for section number uh, two. And we're going to finish this activity, I mean, this section with this activity, okay? So tomorrow we are going to be working uh, on this section. In this case, it's section number three um, that has a, as a name, like, could you do me a favor? Could you do me a favor? So this is the part, um, in this case, this is uh, the, the section that we're going to start tomorrow because for this coming Friday, we're going to finish in the meter. Um, I have to rem remind you something, and this is about uh, what you need to do because I, I was checking some of uh, the, the progress that you have here on the platform and you haven't complete in some uh, sections the 80 percent of the activities I, I don't know if, it, if this is your case but there are some of you that need to complete at least the 80 percent in each of the sections in order to get the uh, certificate so after uh, we finish this um, course um, also I need to tell you and remind you uh, again that you can uh, go uh, through the topic according to your uh, according to the time you have okay because um the thing here is that you can develop if you want you can finish the all the exercises on the platform uh, and it's okay don't worry you can do it so if you finish in one week it's okay if you finish in two days it's okay don't worry the only thing that we have to take care of later after we have finished the platform and we have to get at least the 80% of, of, um, of the whole course, um, we need to take care of the video conference. That's the only thing. Then you are going to be like uh, checking the information, uh, reviewing the information, um, and maybe you didn't see something uh, in the videos that you had posted there in the platform and you sit here in this video conference. And if you have any doubt about those topics, you can ask me and I will uh, extend that information. Okay, is it clear? Okay, very good. So see you tomorrow at the same time. Uh, that's been eight o'clock. Bye-bye. Blessings for love. Good night. Good night. Have a night. Good night. Have a good night, sir.